Well, there's an old saying goes, it's Friday, you ain't got no job, you ain't got shit to do. But, however, here on this particular Friday, as you know, we are intend to keep your Fridays to keep you something to do. For example, to review more wrestling shows. As you know, we have, of course, the latest AEW Rampage that took place. We have the natural Dusty, Dusty, Dustin Rhodes taking on the Butcher. Now, if you guys remember, these guys had a bunkhouse match a couple years back, and I think this is going to be a good match. We do have Mariah May and Deanna Prazo in action. But we also have for our main event on Rampage is a Eliminator match for the AEW International title. Roderick Strong takes on Batty Magic. And then after that, we will be moving on to see who is going to level up on this latest episode of NXT Level Up. But we're going to find out. But first things first, uh, Choco Pro just had one of the recent shows back from March 24th. And... This one has a pretty good lineup, three matches, singles ma a single match, and two tag match. And then, of course, we cap it up with some news updates to give you guys updates what's been happening in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events to promotions they're throwing out, who's book, what matches are set, and, of course, some developments that's been happening in the world of pro wrestling that we need to talk about to all of you. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Everybody to the lead it wrestle zone all things that is pro wrestling with AEW NXT New Japan Pro Wrestling TNA the National Wrestling Alliance various promotions wrestlers matches and championships I am your host Jay right here so if you are new to the channel welcome this is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions not only here in the United States but also in Japan Mexico, Canada, Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about various topics such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. We also do real timing news updates to keep you guys on alert if something has happened in the role of pro wrestling that needs to be addressed. And then, of course, we have the Unagi Sayaka Watch and various other cool things as well. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us. So click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and, of course, other cool stuff as well. But if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now. All introductions are set aside. I believe it's time to get this show on the road. So our very first review is Choco Pro. Okay, our first review. Choco Pro number 362. This is the much recent show that took place. We know 363 will happen real soon. But this one happened this past Sunday. Uh, it wasn't until today it was um, uploaded on the YouTube. Well, it should be Saturday over there and here should be Friday. So we know how the time difference works. But anyway, uh, it opened up, of course, with Chico Shikawa giving the lowdown on the matches and everything else. Uh, yes, guys, she's still on the injured list, so she'll be back old, who knows when, but we're looking forward to it. Now, our very first match, we have, of course, the rookie, Iri Kanei. Uh, those who don't know, she is this 40-year-old wrestler who's just started wrestling. Now, I know some of you are thinking, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, J-Rod. She's really 40 years old and she's wrestling? Well, here's the thing. Tokiko Kiyohara was only in her mid-40s 
when she started wrestling, but she is in fantastic shape. Of course, Iri Kane is really good. I mean, she has a, a certain type of way she displays her wrestling style. I mean, we know that she will not pick up her first win right away, but she knows how to get the job done. But she has to guess, uh, go against the Big Apple, who I like to call the Sliding Devil because she likes to do things that she's not supposed to be doing despite that Malinaki does not like her attitude, um, despite that they are best bros. But anyway, you would think that she will find a way. Maybe so. But Meishruga is a bit more clever. If you guys never seen her Meishruga, she's a bit more clever when it comes to, of course, the high speed. That would have been her X factor. But she, uh, in fact, applied a submission move. And Eri had no other choice but the tap. So, yep. So, she get, uh, so May gets the W and moves on. Now, our next match, we have... Both Sayaka's involved. We have Sayaka, who we know as the Smiling Violence. And then, of course, the chef, uh, Sayaka Obihiro, or as we just call her, Obi. We'll just go like that. Let's call the second Sayaka Obi that way so there'll be no confusion. They face against um, Black Komanachi, consistent of Antonio Honda and Tokiko Kirahara. Now, you would think... It's a, uh, uh, in some capacity, there's going to be some dirty tricks from Black Komanachi, as always. Well, it started out normal. But when it comes to try to find ways to win, that would have been in the favor of Black Komanachi to do that. I mean, we know Sayaka has been very, very uh, growth ever since she started out. And, of course, Obi, we know she's a veteran. I mean, she's a wrestler and a chef. But, yes, that would have been the very factor of this. But, of course, like any other time, we know Antonio Honda would try to display a bit of his comedy routine, or try to use dirty tactics, such as using the vans. But, unfortunately, that did not do any well for Sayaka Onobi, because it was, in fact, Honda who pinned Sayaka and ended in that fashion. So, yeah. So, that's pretty much what happened. Now, our main event, we have the sisters, um... Nonaka Seto and Mia Yotsuba. Now, it was strange for me to see those two team up. Now, whenever when Mitsu, um, Mia introduced everybody saying that Nonaka is her sister, despite the fact they're using different um, wrestling names, um, they did state that they will be teaming time to time. But I think many fans probably would like to see them more often because how often do you have sisters win tag titles? I mean, who knows? But they have to face against Emi Sakura, the veteran, and of course, Minoru Fujita. So you would think there's going to be a bit more aggressiveness. I have to say yes. But the one person who really surprised me is Nona Kaseto. She was not afraid to back down from Emi Sakura, despite Emi Sakura is the queen. So you would think in that fashion it would have been played out. Yes. But uh, unfortunately... Uh, Nono Cassetto was unsuccessful because somehow she kicked out out of the get, uh, Queen's Gambit backbreaker and then all of a sudden kicked out of it. I don't know how she did it, but Emi Sakura knew there was only one way to put her away, and that was the diving body press out of the window, and just like that, it was over. Now, for our Junkin tournament, it was a very interesting one. Uh, at first, I thought Mia was going to make it all the way through, but nope, it did not do. It was the one person who, two people that made it all the way through the finals. That was, uh, I mean, Fujita and Mei Shruga. Now, Mei Shruga, no doubt it, she has always been clever, but unfortunately, that didn't do any well for her because she lost. It was Minoru Fujita who won the, the chocolate, so just like that, it was completely over, so... So that's pretty much it. What happened in Choco Pro? Uh, we do will have another one real soon. Um, the, um, as we speak, it should be already out or not, but we'll see. But we'll just wait and see. At the moment, let's just move on to our next review, and I believe that is AEW Rampage. Okay, AEW Rampage. It begins with Dustin Rhodes 
taking on the Butcher. Now remember, during Dynamite, Dustin Rhodes was doing his little interview with Renee. Uh, he talks about like an open challenge or some so, and then of course the butcher showed up. Now it's no secret that these two men have come across each other before. If you remember, uh, it was Dustin Rhodes and of course, um, what's his name again? Uh, QT Marshall. Now remember, they took on of course the butcher and the plate in a bunkhouse match, which of course QT and Dustin won that match. Now, this is more like, how do I say, a little bit of payback for that, for the Butcher to get even for that particular match. However, you would think that, of course, Dustin, who is currently 55 years old, uh, you know, he still has a little bit of fuel left in him. And you know he was going to bring the fire meat, always with the, with the Destroyer. And then he applied the final reckoning, and just like that, he picked up the W. Now... Uh, we did see a little video package coming from Bullet Club Gold. Of course, the Ass Boys and Jay White, who in fact invaded Daddy Ass's home. Uh, luckily, no one was home, so they were like messing around until Daddy Ass showed up. Not happy to see that they appeared and he chased them away. So I'm sure he's when, the, um, when they're done with their Canadian tour, it's not going to be a pleasantry. I can assure you that. Now, our next match, we have Deanna Prazo taking on uh, Rose. Now, you would think that this match was definitely going to fall in favor with Deanna Prazo because there's this wrestler named Rose. Yes, it did. She applied um, a submission, uh, like a Fujiara armbar submission, and forced her to tap out. However, she was not the only one who did the same thing, and so did, uh, of course, Mariah May. She faced someone named Nikita. Uh, Nikita, I did mention her in the previous review with Ring of Honor. That kind of played out too, as well. And, of course, Tony Storm decided that she's going to watch this. And she saw exactly what she needed to see when Mariah May applied the May Day. And that was completely over. Now, during an interview with Renee, uh, with Lexi, uh, of course, we did see uh, Zack Knight and Harley Cameron sh uh, talking. Of course, Zack Knight... Uh, Told him, you think I was going to face you in Canada or in my hometown, that sort of thing. But, however, uh, Cool Ed Ann showed up with a steel pipe. Basically, he is not, he cannot control his composure due to the fact of what Knight did. Ruby Soho tried everything to try to calm him down. It's more like she's not, doesn't want to be there for him. Like, she didn't want this for him at all. But, of course, Cool Ed if I was him. He would try to talk to her and tell her, look, he cannot control himself. So we'll see what happens. Now, our next match is our main event, the AEW uh, International Title and Eliminator match. Uh, Roderick Strong challenges uh, Daddy, at, uh, Daddy Magic. Now, the only reason this match took place is because, as you know, they were in Canada. And this is, of course, uh, Daddy Asses, I mean, Daddy Magic's. Um, home turf. So that kind of played out like the local hero who gets the opportunity and hopes to make his countrymen proud. And that kind of played out pretty well. Now, the only thing that, of course, uh, Daddy Magic has to contend is the fact, of course, those morons from the Undisputed Kingdom, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, were going to be there. Of course, that was going to happen. But it happened like on two or three occasions during the match. But unfortunately, um, Rock Strong applied a knee strike, and it was over right from there when the, they got the three count, one, two, three. However, during the post-match, they this, the Undisputed Era decided to break, to punish more on Daddy uh, Magic. However, the best friends, Orange and Trent, showed up for the save. Until they did the little hook thing, they were low-blowed by their opponents that they will face at Collision, I believe, and that is, of course, the Bucks. As you know, the Bucks are determined to win back the AEW World Tag Team Towers, but we'll see what happens until then, until we get to that moment. But we'll see. But at the right, as of right now, let's just end things with AEW Rampage and move on with NXT Level Up. Okay, so who levels up on this latest episode of NXT Level Up? 
Let's find out. Our first match we have Metaphor consistent of Flash Legend and Jakar Jackson taking on Carly Bright and uh, Kendall Gray. Now, not much I don't know who she is, but according to the background from what our both commentators were saying, uh, Car uh, Kendall Gray has a bit of the, an amateur background, which is good. It does play out pretty well. We do know someone in the wrestling business that has that. Of course, that is Layla Hirsch. But how will Kendall Gray do? I have to say she really impressed me a little bit. Now, not a whole lot has been shown with her, but I can tell that she can pull things up. But unfortunately, uh, didn't do any well for her because she ended up on the alley -oop by, of course, Metaphor. But it was, of course, Last Legend who picked up the win. Now, before their main event, uh, Sarah conducted an interview with H Tank and Hank uh, talking about their last match in the best of three series against DuPont and Igwe. So, of course, it's kind of interesting that these two have been doing those bestest best of series so they kind of had a little unorthodox bet so i forgot what dupont and Igwe betted on but however it was of course tank and let uh depended on uh dupont's pants <laughs> I, I don't know why they would go for the pants but i thought it was funny so he gladly accepted now our next match we have Scripps versus Javon Evans. Now, Javon Evans has been very impressive. However, he said that he wanted to change the game. However, one person in particular thinks of that this is a threat. And he feels like, hey, kid, you don't have what it takes to, cha the, to change the game. I'm not going to allow you. And that person is Scripps. So that pl practically played out. However... Of course, OTM was going to get themselves involved. They'll make sure that this match goes in Scripps' favor. But uh, Evans was smart enough to know that he's not he's in a difficult task. I mean, Jada Parker would distract the ref while the big brutes, uh, Lima and, um, and Price, were going to make sure that, they were, that this match was going to go to Scripps. But unfortunately, it was an inside credo by Evans that put away scripts. This led to a shocking win. I don't know if anybody expected it, but it did. And I'm sure Scripps is not happy knowing that he lost to a guy he feels doesn't should not be the one to ch change the game. Well, it is what it is. So, too bad. Now, our main event... We have the best of series. We have I Dupont, uh, Tyson Dupont and Tyreek Igwe taking on Hank Walker and Tank Ledger. I have to say, this is one of those matches I enjoyed. They were like equally matched in strength-wise, uh, tag-teaming-wise. I have to say, it was a fantastic match. But I was not expecting how this match was going to end because... Of course, we were going to have a winner, but the way the match ended was like, okay, I did not expect that. There was a moment where, of course, both um, Hank and DuPont knocked each other out. DuPont landed on his back while Hank landed on top of him. So, uh, stomach first, and just like that, one, two, three, was like, what? You got to be kidding me. You know, I'm like, that's how you win? I'm like, I don't know. But nonetheless, it was a win. And, of course, Hank and Tank got win the best of series. So, But, of course, both DuPont and Igwe um, shook hands with both Tank and, and Hank. And everything is history. So, I think I can say that these two teams were, of course, evenly matched in some way. But the way it went, you probably wouldn't think that. But it just happened. But. Who knows? So I think that's pretty much it right now with um, NXT Level Up. I believe it's time to move on with our last and final thing we're going to do. News updates. Okay, 
So welcome to our news updates. So this is what we have for all of you. Now let's begin with updates with the promotions for their upcoming events. Now, as you know, we pick out like the GCW and put them all in one big pile. Let's do that first. Uh, for GCW, we have, of course, the um, Indie Hall of Fame that will take place on the 7th of April during WrestleMania week. And they just announced for the fifth inductee and they haven't announced who's going to be inducting him. But the person who's being inducted is none other than ECW legend Sabu. That's right. Sabu will be the fifth inductee. So I'm very happy for him. And then, our, then of course, on the 20th of April, we do have for the How High show at LA at the Ukrainian Cultural Center, we have Bussy, Ali Catch, and Effie taking on the Stoner Brothers. So that will be a good match. Now, as you know, for, uh, they just announced the name of one of the two new shows in May. One of them in Columbus, Ohio, is called Paranoid. On the 26th of May, they just announced who's going to be there. And they announced Nick Gage is going to be there, Trish Adora, Mance Warner, and of course, Bussy, Ali Catch and Effie. Now, moving on. Now, for some sad news coming from Ref Pro, uh, they just announced that Zack Sabre Jr., Ha will re be withdrawing from the Revolution Rumble this coming Sunday. Now, the reasons behind that is because due to some uh, logistics issues. Uh, I don't know if there was a problem that they couldn't control. We'll just see what happens. But hopefully we'll get to see Zack Sabre Jr. again in Rep Pro. Now, as you know, Stardom uh, will be here for uh, in the States for WrestleMania week at in Philadelphia. As you know, they have a show called The American Dream. They'll take place on the 4th. However, the card for that particular day has been announced. Now, let me pull that up for all of you real quick. Just stay with me. Yes, here it is. Okay, so this is the, the full card of that particular day. The Of course, the red belt, the World of Stardom Championship, will be defended. Micah defends her belt against her tag partner for Divine Kingdom, Megan Bain. And then we're going to have an interesting um, six-woman tag match. Mayu Iwatani, Tam Nakano, and Momo Kogo will be teaming up. They'll take on the reuniting of the OG Club Venus. So that's going to be a one-night only. So it's Mina Shirakawa, Mariah May, and Zaya Brookside. And then, of course, we have Sudi and Konami. They'll be in action. They'll take on Willow Nightingale and Saki. And then, of course, we'll have Azumi, Sayakamitani, and Cameron Brunei versus Stephanie Vakir, Momo Wanabe, and Starlight Kid. And then, of course, we have a high-speed title match uh, in a three-way. We have Mei Sita, Ram Kaicho, and Saki Kashima. And I think that's pretty much it for that. Now, we do know that the Spark Yoshi Perusa will be having their show on the 7th of April during WrestleMania week. They announced a three-way match, Kyoko Inoue. Azumi and Danny Mo will be in. And however, Ram Kaicho, who is one of the champions in this promotion, uh, she'll put the Sparky, uh, Spark Yoshi Pacific title on the line against a mystery opponent. So we still don't know who it is. Uh, we do have, of course, the West Coast Pro for the Coast on the 18th of May. Uh, we have the women's title will be defended. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, give me a few minutes. Let me pause here. So anyway, yes, uh, for the West Coast women's title, Takumi Iroha will defend her belt against Zara Sakir. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Now, uh, we do have for our developments here, it's been announced that there's going to be an interesting partnership. West Coast Pro, Deadlock Pro Wrestling, and Prestige are entering a partnership. So this is huge news for the world of pro wrestling, and I hope everybody enjoys it. Now... Some interesting things that happen. As you know, Utame Ayashida will be leaving stardom real soon. However, her contract ends by the end of this month, but she'll have a final show later on in April. However, her former uh, teammate and former leader of Queen's Quest had these harsh comments towards Queen's Quest. And let me pull it up. Isn't it the key, uh, Queen's Quest member's fault for her leaving? The fact that three uh three consecutive leaders have quit so far, Io Shirai, uh, Wananabe, Utami, means Q Queen's Quest is definitely at fault. They should repent. 
So Momo has the uh, h- harsh criticism towards them because, as you know, Momo used to be a leader herself. The only reason she betrayed Queen Quest was because she felt that, you know, the weight on the shoulders of her as a leader, and not to mention not gaining the one belt she has been long desiring, which is the red belt. So she wants the Queen's Quest to take responsibility for losing their leaders. Well, they're not going to do that. However, we do have that strong feeling that Azumi will be the one to step up as a leader since she is the only living longest member and, of course, has a connection to someone you guys know, and that is none other than Io Sky, or better known as Io Shirai. So we'll see that. Now, some interesting things happen in the world of Twitch, especially to our one of our favorite wrestlers, Kenny Omega. Apparently, as you guys know, he's been more active in Twitch recently. He invited Adam Cole to participate, and... Not, he's not the only one. They even brought in Riho. That's right. Our first ever women's champion in AEW that was made an appearance. But the f- best part is Riho beat Adam Cole's butt in Street Fighter. So <laughs> I was like, I did not know she played Street Fighter. I mean, I would love to play Street Fighter. I want to see how good she is. But yeah. So anyway. But continuing on with Kenny Omega's Twitch, he also said his two favorite wrestlers in stardom is none other than Azumi and Starlight Kid. I mean, I would love if him do a Twitch with them. I would like to see them. I know he is very fluent in Japanese, so we'll see what happens until then. Now, interesting things I did not know. Um, At Risk Girls announced it by the by Sunday. Their partnership with promotion Best Body Japan Pro Wrestling will be expiring. Now, if you guys are unfamiliarized with this promotion, Best Body Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, this is the first promotion that Mina Shirakawa has ever been in. Yes, you can see their shows on YouTube, so you should check it out. Uh, They said that one of the wrestlers from that promotion will be returning to um, Best Body Japan soon. Uh, Her name is Arena Yaman. Haka or something like that? Yes, but she'll be making her return. Um, Some sad news uh, coming from Tony Schiavone. Uh, He announced that his dog uh, passed away. Uh, Very sad. I mean, I know there are people that love their pets and all that. Me, I have two cats. And I love them so much, but I hate to see what happened to his dog. But uh, nothing but prayers and thoughts to Tony and the rest of his family for the loss of their dog. Now... So you may question something that were un- unclear. Uh, Jay White was not present uh, during AW shows in Canada. The reason behind that is because a he does not have he does not have any visas a visa to work in Canada. So basically, he is in the states, but he will resume his position with AW once they do back their U.S. tour. So we'll just gotta wait and see. So I think that's pretty much it. What we have. So let's just as this moment call it a day well i hope everybody enjoys uh, enjoys this episode coming up we do have aew collision but i'll be of course uh try to review sendai i mean stardom with their upcoming event this one's gonna be good so we'll see what happens until then but for right now i'll see you guys in the next dwz time same dwz channel i must bid all of you adieu so goodbye and have a nice day Bang.